So you've had your AC running for a while, and all of a sudden you notice there's barely any air coming out. What's going on? You go to the air handler closet, you look down, and you see a bunch of ice on the line set. About 96% of the time, this is a dirty air filter. About 2% of the time, a dirty coil. About 1% of the time, a low refrigerant charge, and I'll leave 1% to other. Okay, came in this morning and noticed the AC sounded a little funny, and noticed ice on the unit. So immediately I came and turned the unit to off and then turned the fan to on. That'll pull the, let the uh, ice melt a lot faster. And it also caused when the moisture is running down the evaporator, it'll cause it to hug a little bit and run into the pan. Now it can put out a lot of water, so you may want to put some towels here or monitor the situation, maybe use a wet dry vacuum and dry it out if it uh, overflows. Um, but um, also, I turned the breaker off for the air conditioner and the range because sometimes these can be labeled wrong. But anyway, turn the breaker off for the air conditioner because I've seen it happen where a unit got, gets so frozen that the contactor coil stays frozen, stuck in. So just turning it off and letting everything thaw out and then I'll reset it and I'll check it. Check for a dirty coil. I found this one was turned down to 65 degrees and it had been running probably all night. So not good but uh anyway i'll check it out and change the air filter and uh and clean the coil it's probably just a dirty air filter and that's why uh it froze up but uh anyway that's the story there um, okay so now the uh air condition has had a chance to completely dry out and um it didn't really get a flood so that's good I'm gonna open it up here take a peek and see how much filter is. Oh. Yeah, I'd say it was the filter. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'll change it out with a new filter and you see you'll be back in business. You're good to go. Okay. So I went and got my new filter, got my coil cleaner, and I'm going to go to town on this puppy. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to cooling because we want the coolant to run while we clean the coil. Use the hold button. And the reason is because the uh, air conditioner, of course, removes moisture from the air and that's how it absorbs a lot of the heat in the moisture and runs down the drain. Absorbs the heat into the refrigerant, cycles that to the condenser on the roof and releases the heat outside of the dwelling. Uh, it actually removes heat from the unit. It's not really brings cool air in, it brings the hot air out. Now the air condition actually runs at a little bit lower speed than the heater does on some systems and it's more effective when it runs at a lower speed for removing heat from the unit. So for air conditioning, a lower speed is a little bit better. Now this um, coil is fairly old. You can see some rust on the coil and uh, but I'm just going to do the best I can to make it much better and have a good summer. And you can see that the coil was pretty dirty. And our coils inside, well, the filter was pretty dirty. The coil inside is probably fairly dirty as well. Let me shine some light on it. Oh yeah. Pretty dirty, right? So what I have is a no-rinse coil cleaner. We're going to add that, and I'm also going to add condensate tablets to the drain to a, both to prevent a clog as well as to treat the drain with anti-rust, anti-mold, anti-coagulant, which helps prevent the dirt from clumping up. So here's the condensate tablets. I'm just going to add those to the drain, and going to add a couple up top here. Again, as the evaporator runs and the moisture runs down there, it's going to, the moisture will mix with the tablets and, and just a little by little release into the drain to help keep everything going. Now for the coil cleaner, I've just got it in a pump sprayer here. So just kind of pump it up and real simply just spray on no rinse coil cleaner. It rinses with the condensation and runs down the drain. Again, it's important to run it, keep the unit running for about 20 minutes after 
using this stuff. Um, you know about soap, the way soap works is, I need to pump it up some more. The way soap works is it's hydrophobic. That means it's, it's afraid of water and it tries to get rid of, get away from the water. And the way it does that is by digging under the dirt. So it acts as a catalyst to release the dirt and then the dirt runs, the water can help carry it away. So that's why the uh, no rinse coil cleaner can work. Now for a coil this dirty, it's probably not all gonna come off in one application. It's gonna take a few, a few rounds probably of, of treating this to um, really get it good. You can see our soap starting to bubble up there. That's yeah, a good thing. Try to release this dirt and give us back a nice clean coil. Definitely going to take some time to really do it right, but it's what it is. <laughs> and while I'm here, I'll also spray a little on the back side. And this one also has a, um, a coil up top, but um, for the hydronic coil. Definitely a lot trickier uh, to get to. You may need to turn the unit off uh, when I spray that one. I'd like to do that. Now I'll need to wait five minutes for the pressures to equalize before turning it back on, but that'll just allow me to spray it really good and spray the coil up top as well. Yeah, uh, the uh, the kind of is. You want to have a better summer? It's a good idea to try to get things clean and clear. Uh, you want to avoid the tip touching the. Oak pins, they're very easy to bend. They're aluminum pins, and um, we don't want them to bend. Um, anyway, got our coil cleaner sprayed on there. And um, spray this one some more down here. And then we'll close everything up. I'll put the filter in, and we'll go ahead and run it. But you get the idea here. Sometimes the soap here is, is enough too to see a small leak. If you had a small leak, you can watch for any bubbling up on the coil. And I'll spray some in the pan too. And I can just get everything clear and clean. And then we'll add our new filter. Now there's definitely lots of choices and filters out there. This particular filter is perfect for this type of environment. If you're going to change your filter every month, then the heavier duty pleated filters might be good because they, they start right away filtering the air. Problem is they're so good at, filtration is so good that after a month you have major air restriction. So if you're not going to change your filter every month, if you're only going to change it about every three months, this is probably the be better filter to go with. 
The reason is this filter starts off not filtering very good and then little by little as it collects dirt, it actually starts to filter out better and better and you really won't have air restriction as much um, till about three months. So, you know, these work good for changing every three months. So you kind of have to, you know, choose your approach to how you're going to handle taking care of your air conditioning system. You know, if it's your own home, it's a lot easier to change it every month. If you have allergies, you might want to use what's called a HEPA filter. That's a high efficiency particle arrester. It filters out smaller micron sizes. And so for people with asthma and stuff like that, they may want to consider that, but it's a much more expensive filter. It's probably about 25 bucks a filter and you really need to change it every, three, every 30 days. Otherwise, it's going to cause air restriction and then you're going to have an iced up coil. Um, so, you know, again, you have to take the best approach for your situation. And for most people, a filter like this, changing it every 30 days is going to be the, yep, the norm. Yep, I said uh, 30 days there, but I meant 90 days. 90 yeah, days is going to be the Check norm. your smoke alarm at the same time. Get the old finger sound. Make sure everything's good, but just a little preventative maintenance. Keep everything good and keep everything safe. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna make sure I keep it running for about 20 minutes. That's gonna clear it up. And for something as dirty as this one, you may need to go a few times, you know, a couple uh, more treatments of the Enviro coil cleaner. This is an environmentally no friendly, no rinse coil cleaner. So I really, this is one of my favorite coil cleaners because it does the job and won't hurt your plants and stuff like that uh, in, in your yard if your condensation runs out to the yard. Anyway, thanks for watching Country Maintenance. Hope that helps. You guys stay safe out there and I uh, hope your repair jobs go nice and easy. Hope you can get to the uh, preventative maintenance that you need to do so that you have a really nice summer with uh, none of those middle of the night uh, experiences where you have no AC. That's no fun. Nice to keep it nice and chilly, nice and comfortable, how you like it, if you like it chilly. Um, yeah, anyway, that's how I like it. Air nice and clean and uh, things working like this should. Thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. Over now. I'll just turn it on here, back on a cool, drop it down, hit my hold button, and we're good to go. We'll run for about 20 minutes and I'll probably give it another two or three uh, sprays just to keep it all going good. And I just remembered I forgot to turn the breakers back on. You can hear the condenser on the roof kick on. I forgot to turn the breakers on after I had turned them off last time in case the contactor got stuck because the coil was frozen. <laughs> anyway, now I can run and rinse that uh, coil cleaner away. Good to go. Feel the line starting to get cold. As it brings the refrigerant in. Yeah, that'll clean it up.